morning, morning millennials. millennials. Welcome back to the Morning Toast. Happy Wednesday. It is hump day. So make sure to hump someone you love. I've already gotten started this morning with my son, who's looking so sexy this morning. Theo. Do hey, Jack. How hey. do to do? So good to see you. You look so beautiful, stunning, and smart. Ugh, Theo is just like... Everything. He's just what you need to like power through your week, you know? It is. Like, just when it? I... It is. Are you referring to Theo as an it? No, that it's just what you need. Oh, okay. Because he's just what you need. And so therefore but you that said that sentiment it's... is just what you need. Sure, sure, sure. I just wanted to make sure, you know, we weren't, um, you know, going down that road. But why would I ever do that? I don't Have know. you ever known me to do that? No, that's why it was so out of character for you. I just had to call you on it. Right. But you were wrong. J'accuse. J'accuse. Hope everyone had an amazing day yesterday. It's been 24 hours since we last saw you. Not that much has happened. We have a, a good amount of stuff to discuss. The Bachelorette was on last night. Yes. It is Wednesday, which means our dear toasters. It's just like, you know, it's so in demand. Everyone wants to know, like, when's the next year toasters? When's the next year toasters? It's always Wednesday. It's today, you guys. So if you ever want to write in, the email is deartoasters at gmail.com. We will read your advice completely completely anonymously on air and give our, you know, we'll try our best. We will. We, we give good advice. Feels like a while since we've done a Dear Toasters. So I have some fresh advice being cooked up. I do. Yeah. I do. mean, yesterday was a crazy day. Spotify wrapped came out and I know we were just talking about it too. It's such a great day when Spotify kind of wrapped early. comes out. December 1st, I guess. No, I know. But then it's like, it's really not a 2020. It's, a, it's, it's an 11, 11 month. Yes. And then my question is, does the music you listen to in December yeah. count towards anything? Yeah. Yeah. Like, could I just start listening to crazy stuff just cause? 100%. Because the count doesn't start till January 1st and like, no one's looking right now. No, no, that's such an excellent question. I, I don't know. I definitely don't think it goes into your 2020. Mm. It, that wouldn't make sense. Because it's not in 2021. I yeah. don't know. I would need and some some follow-up from the Spotify team. If it did go into the 2020, I would have more Christmas music in my Spotify wrapped. You mean the I 2021? Yeah, 2021, because I listen to the Christmas music in December. Right. I don't have any Christmas songs in my top 100. Maybe that's why they don't include December in their rap, because it's like skewed Too data. Too influenced by the holiday. Right. Yeah, but it is interesting. Also, I feel like they usually give you a nice thing. Maybe this came in my email and I missed it, where it's like, by You got season. an email? No, they usually send you an email, like letting you know your rap is here. And Did ready. you get it? Well, it, it goes to my college email, which I oh. don't check. But I should check it because usually they send in your email like what you were listening to in the fall, in the spring. Right. And I do like the data broken down in that way as well. I just find it such a premium experience like to go find your data and then like the little stories they put together with the music playing in the background, bright colors. It's a really premium experience. It's so premium. We actually have a story about Spotify rap, so we'll share our insights then. But I just want to say everyone was tagging us in the minutes they listened to the toast. And like I was posting so many of them on my stories, even though I know it's like annoying for the viewer. It's like a classic annoying thing. Like, on social but media. I was just like so grateful. Proud. Proud and also grateful to everyone who listens to the show for thousands of hours, who listens to hundreds of episodes. Like this year has been just extremely trying. And I feel like for a lot of you and for us too, like the toast has been the constant, like a life raft a yeah. little bit. And I'm just like, really grateful for, to everyone who's listened this year. That's yeah, all. so we're just being annoying like showing everyone we have so many listeners, you know? No, but like I also, okay. like, I wish I could post all of the mentions. Yeah, you know? I know. But now I've just started posting like the ones that are like hundreds of episodes. No, it's actually crazy just seeing how much, um, how many episodes people listen to a year. Because we have had 204 new episodes this year. But some people have watched like over 400 episodes because they're listening to old episodes Where'd too. Where did you get 204? Our, um... On podcast? Yeah, no, our back end. Oh, interesting. I and that's saw without Patreon. I saw that too, but it's 204. Oh, oh, wow. We do so many episodes. It's insane. I know. But then no, and then some people were posting, like, I, post, I listened to 180 episodes. I'm like, well, you missed 20. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, 180? That's not enough. You haven't listened to all of them? Well, then I was also thinking, okay, so we're up to 204 episodes. We probably have like 15 more episodes. Maybe, no, no, no maybe less this year. But there's 365 days in a year. Now, of course, you have to take out weekends holidays and vacations so it's just like how many week days are there in a year i mean we could here i'll do it quickly so there's 52 weeks in a year means that there's 52, 52 jumps five 52 weekends oh sure 104 weekends so, so 365, 365 minus, minus 104. 104 is 261 oh the, and we did we'll, we'll end up doing like 215 220 i think that's pretty good yeah plus like established holidays and then, like, when we were away in August, we did one episode a week. Sort and of plus Patreon. Plus Patreon probably brings us back to, like, two, probably brings us around 250. So there is probably, hypothetically, a episode of the Morning Toast for every weekday of the year. Probably. That's our intention. 
Because if we're not here, we're doing Patreon, and we're always just giving, like, content in random places. Yeah. It's also a leap year. year, So we had that extra day for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot it was a leap year. So much happened. I know. And the leap day was uh, before all this coronavirus, like, drama. We got one more good day in, though. That's true. You got to count your blessings. Oh, my God. I'm so grateful. You know, I feel really, um, you know, I don't really know a lot of stuff, like, about science or history or geography or biology (laughs) or pretty much any of the ologies. But I feel really, like... um, you know when it's like you know one weird piece of trivia and like you just you bring it, it up in, whenever you, work you can? It into every piece of conversation. I like understand why we have leap years and it's like what – because I, I learned it in school once and I just never forgot it. It's like weird what sticks with you and I feel so proud. Do you, wanna, do you know I why? Think, I think people would want to know why. Sometimes we do like to educate and inform here. So do you know that every year is how many days? 365, Claudia. Wrong. It's actually 365 and six hours. Okay. So every four years, those extra six hours accumulate in one, one extra day. day. And that's what – leap day. February 29th. Right? February 29th. Yeah. yeah. I believe we were in LA, the LA Steens. You want to know how I know that? How? Because I just got my Spotify wrapped, my number one song of the year. I'm going to spoil this, even though we do have a story about just Spotify wrapped in general. My number one song of the year was Stupid Love by Lady Gaga. And they said the first time that I played it was February 28th. And it came out while we were in LA. Remember, yeah. we were like listening. And can you believe? And if you listen to my reaction, because I think we talked about it on the toast, my reaction to that song, I was like, it's good. It was Meh. whatever. Number one song of the year for me. I mean, I also just can't believe we traveled um, like a week before coronavirus. Two weeks. Yeah, and then I was also in Miami for um, President's Day weekend. So like that was liter- before that. Oh, it was. Yeah. So like it was just like now that we've it's December. So like, pardon me for just getting like emotional like perspective. You know, like it's just so crazy. Like when you take a step back and realize how like we were moving so fast. Like even like the week before coronavirus, like we would not be stopped. Like not we, you and I, we as a society, like we as a society, everything was just still happening. And then one day, like the world just paused yeah. and it, and it never, never turned back on again. Press play. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <Press it. laughs> Please. Um, so yeah, sorry to get all introspective, but I feel like this is the month, and it's December 2nd, so we're starting early, but, like, where, and even in the stories today, you'll see, like, everything is now, like, year-end roundup. Up. Like, we have, like, people, apparently has their people of the year. Everything is of the year. We got Spotify wrapped. Like, yeah. we're, and I feel like we're going to be doing a lot of episodes that are, like, our best of the year. Even the redheads, oh, I need to make this announcement, because I only announced it on Instagram Live. Such a big deal, you guys. Maybe just take a second, if you're listening to this podcast, sit down. And just brace yourselves for what's about to come. Maybe major news. Maybe you take a second and stop being so mean to the redheads who are going to be like such I wasn't a source being mean. of support for you. I wasn't being mean. I'm dead serious. It's a really big deal. It's not a really big deal, but it's a big re- deal. The redheads episode this week is dropping one week later because of scheduling conflicts. We wanted to be able to record in person and make it the best episode possible because we're going to do our whole year in review. And the book that we read this month is it. So it will drop next Thursday, not tomorrow. I'm sorry if this like ruins anything for you. I told you guys you were going to want to sit down. <laughs> I was right. I wasn't being dramatic. I'm being dead serious. Okay. Thanks. Can't just like throw a wrench in people's plans and not make it a big I deal. Know, I know. And I only had announced it on like the Instagram live, which I feel like millions of people watch, but it was only millions, like, billions. It was only a handful. <laughs> so So now you know. Um, But yes, I agree with you. I think something about like it now being December. This whole year we've been like, I can't believe it's already the summer. But now that it's actually December. December hit different. For everyone. And I think everyone's becoming like deeply. um, Introspective. And like nostalgic over the year. Nostalgic for the good two months. Yeah. So I think just putting the fact that it's December like really puts into perspective that like the year's over. I know that's obvious seeing as how December is the last month, but like it just makes you like emo and stuff. Yes, it definitely does. And it's usually more fun to reflect on the year in December because there is like so much to reflect on. Mm-hmm. This year is obviously different, but I feel like we'll still have some things to reflect on, like different phases of quarantine. Like remember the tie-dye phase? Yeah, that was a dark time. There was Tiger King phase. Tiger King phase. I remember the, um, for me, the knitting phase, that was, mm. that was a low point for sure. For me, there was like a chips phase where I was eating chips every day. Oh, that sounds like an awesome phase. Yeah, and then I, was, I graduated to French fries. Oh, for me, there was like the taco phase where like literally all I ate was tacos. There was like Passover there. That's how I started eating chips. Passover. I can't believe we had Passover in Zoom quarantine. Zoom Passover. Yeah, that was so sad. There was the Zoom toast phase. Zoom toast fo- phase. There was, there was some dark times. I could bring up some bad stuff too, but I'm just looking to move forward. Keep my head towards 2021. 
2021. We're right on track. So speaking of moving forward, let's get in. Oh my God, you're like the nerd who I'm drops sorry. all of his books. I have so many cards today because we have obviously the sponsors, but then we also have Dear Toaster. So I'm like, oh <laughs> no, I can't keep my cards up. Sorry. <laughs> so unprprofessional of me. <laughs> you're like the nerd. No, I'm like, I get shoved into a locker. I'm like, oh, oh my cards. My textbook. Okay, let's go. When I'm ready. Let's go. I don't, I'm not feeling it. Uh, are you, what do you say? <laughs> um, okay. Oh, let, yeah, I can do now it. Now it's time to dive no, into the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. Don't hit that crunch. Yeah, that's don't right. Don't hit that yeah, crunch. Yeah, that's right. You don't do it. You're not the only one who could do it, Jackie. Okay. And today's episode is brought to you by Hush Blankets, which has really been the true sponsor of quarantine. Mine, the one that we got, um... I don't know, maybe I've had it for like eight months now. Still at the edge of my bed. It's the best thing that I own. And I'm literally, I've convinced all my friends to get it. It is the best, most high quality weighted blanket out there. I was, um, I always knew what the weighted blanket was for me. I just saw some that were like kind of ugly. And the Hush Blankets one are really, really cute. I have like a, a navy blue velvet one. Yes. It's the throw blanket. And they're just way more stylized because I've seen some really ugly ones. So while I, <laughs> I believe in the power of weighted blankets, like I just don't want something ugly on my bed. No. But the Hush Blankets one are stylish as hell. And the navy blue one matches your navy blue pillows. Yes, it does. Um, the quality of the blanket is fabulous. It is made with luxurious, high quality materials. The Hush Blanket is substantially better, better looking than any other weighted blanket on the market. I completely agree. And if you want to know the benefits of a weighted blanket and why it might be helpful for you, um, in these stressful times, especially with, with, with what's going on in the world, people are experiencing stress and anxiety about many things. And the Hush Blanket goal is to provide a sense of relief. The Hush Blanket will help you relax, stay calm, and feel like a big hug. You, it's actually proven to help have a deeper sleep. You can actually be proven to stay asleep longer. And it's proven to help people who experience anxiety and stress. And the Hush Blanket Give Back program it's fabulous because they donate one in, one in 10 adult blankets and one in five kids blankets to charities and shelters in need. It's been a huge part of their brand since day one. And they also have a 100-night guarantee. So if you're on the fence about it, the return and exchange process is super easy. You have 100 nights to test out your blanket. And if you don't love it, you'll see, you can send it back to them for a full refund. No questions asked. I don't think that's going to happen. But it's nice to have that sort of security yes. blanket. <laughs> um <laughs> If you also, if you feel like it's too heavy or light, you can exchange sizes. So it's not just like one size, but it's all because like different people need different weights, you know? Um, if you want to check out Hush Blankets and also get a 15% off code, use the code TOASTER, that's T-O-A-S-T-E-R, at hushblankets.com. But only um, if you use hushblankets.com, promo code TOASTER, T-O-A-S-T-E-R, for 15% off. Off and then it goes down to 10% off. So make sure you use it ASAP, hushblankets.com. Love it. Okay. Um, I was going to say something about hush blankets. Oh, I just feel like I'm really feeling blankets right now. Like Me it's too. blanket season. Vibe cultivated cultivation is so premium and you need a blanket in order to achieve the cultivated vibes. And also, blankets are an amazing gift. Yes, I agree. Like so cozy and personal. In these times, especially. Yes. Okay, first story, big news of the day. Ellen Page comes out as transgender will be called Elliot. Ellen Page is transgender and will now go by, by the name Elliot Page, he announced on social media on Tuesday. Quote, I feel lucky to be writing this, to be here, to have arrived at this place in my life, he wrote. I feel overwhelmingly gratitude for the incredible people who have supported me along this journey. I can't begin to express how remarkable it feels to finally love who I am enough to per pursue my authentic self. Paige said he will use he, they pronouns. Got it. Um, I thought that the statement posted on his social media was like very profound and very well said. And um, I, I mean, this is just wonderful. I feel like this is a big deal. I feel like there aren't tons of celebrities. I can only think of two who, uh, who are who have come out as transgender. After being famous. After being famous. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's Caitlyn Jenner and Chaz Bono. Uh, yeah. Chaz, yeah, Chaz Mono. Yeah, for sure. No, it's it's so great. It's always nice to see someone who's just like being their true, complete self. And I think that's the greatest feeling for anyone. Totally. And I think some people have, you know, a tougher road getting there. Mm -hmm. But I just always find it so inspiring. Like when I someone Because that's just uh, the motto. Be yourself. Yeah. And it's like it's so much easier said than done. But like when you right. when you literally live your life feeling you were feeling like you were born in the wrong body, like that's such a big change. And I agree. Like living seeing people who just like do them and like unapologetically like I'm so jealous of that you know yeah so I'm happy for him very happy so beautiful so many celebs are coming out to support yes. Jason and Sarah James Gunn Miley Cyrus Anna Paquin also he is in Umbrella Academy 
Which I haven't heard of. I've heard of it, and I think I've heard that it's really good, but I've never watched it. I was just curious if you've seen it. No, I have not seen it. But, like, people keep recommending new Netflix shows to me, and, like, I... I'm actually feeling like my plate might be like on the verge of getting full, even though I'm like so in. You have a big plate. Even though I'm like so invested in Lost right now, and I found out something crazy about Lost. Okay. So there's a character. He's like a young kid. His name is Walt. He's like a cutie, and he's like he's important. And obviously, the show was like ten years ago. And you know who Walt is now? He's one half of MK MK MKTO. Yes. Oh man, I'm like having a stroke today. I, can't I talk. love MKTO. So out of my mind, in a mind. And when I was born in the wrong time, you one of a kind, living in a world gone mad. Baby, you're so classic. Songs that have no business going that hard. Yes, 100%. And I just found out he's one half of MKTO. I love that. For him, me too. That's a really happy ending. So that's my um, dilemma now. Yes, I've heard Umbrella Academy is very good. I've heard In the Dark is very good. I'm like missing out on some Netflix shows. Never heard of In the Dark. You should also watch Money Heist. So oh, good. Is it a story um, about Millie Bobby Brown? No. So could we just talk about it really quickly? Did you sure. see the video she posted on social media? No. Um, she was like, did a series of Instagram stories like crying about this experience she had in the mall where like some girl asked if she could, if like, she's like, are you Millie Bobby Brown? And Millie Bobby Brown was like, yeah. And the girl was like, can I take a video of you? And Millie Bobby Brown was like, like a video of me just like standing here. <laughs> And the girl was like, yeah, and Millie Bobby Brown was like, no. And then the girl, like, continued to, like, invade Millie Bra- Bobby Brown's personal space and, um, like, video her and her mom. She was shopping in the mall with her mom for holiday season. And it was, like, kind of, like, really sad. Like, is- I, like I think on the surface, and I was reading people's, like, feedback from it. It's, like, people didn't see what the big deal was. Like, it was, like, one girl. But I, like, totally, um, like, felt for Millie Bobby Brown. She's, like... 11 years old, you know? Yeah, I mean, she is getting older, so I don't think she's 11 anymore. No, I know, but she will always be 11 to me. Do you know what I mean? No, I do know what you mean. I think that is weird. Like, if I'm sure if she had asked for a selfie, I'm sure Millie would have... 100%. ...said yes. And that's what she said in the video. She's like, I'll take a picture with anyone, but But that's just weird. Yeah. That's a weird request. Yeah, no, it is, right? Like, why do you want a video of Millie Bobby? Like, and it's not like she said, can you say hi to my sister? Wish my mom a happy birthday. Like... She literally just said, I'd video you. Yeah, that is weird. But it's become such a big story. And all I kept thinking about last night, like, is what is that girl thinking? Like, she's, like, probably, like, in her home and, like, locked herself in her bedroom. And she's, like, freaking out how she, like, made Millie Bobby Brown cry. Good. That's good. It's a learning no, but lesson. She, <laughs> no, for sure. It was a lesson she that needs to be learned. learned her lesson. But at the end of the day, she's just, like, a fan. And it's she was probably, like, like, a nice I'm girl. I'm sure Millie Bobby Brown didn't, like, share her name. or No, no. But so. I'm sure this girl just has, like, the biggest pick. Right. She, right. But she's learning a lesson. Yeah, of course. Of course. And it's and important to. she's not going to gonna go and ruin someone else's day now. It's important to, to learn your lessons for sure. But she's probably just, like, freaking out. She's, like, a, I, I don't know what, how old she is. But I'm just, the way I picture it, she's a kid. Yeah, well, you know, kids supporting other kids. Always, always, always. Yeah, no, I love to see a lesson learned. Lessons being learned. Okay, we have some hosting news. Okay. Are you ready for it? Oh, yes, I know the what talk, this is. Yes. The talk names Amanda Klutz and Elaine Weldroth as co-hosts. The talk named two co-hosts on Wednesday after Page Six exclusively revealed that producers and network execs have been panicking over ratings. So first, celebrity chainer Amanda Klutz, who lost her husband, Broadway star Nick Cordero, to COVID-19 earlier this year, and journalist Elaine Welt-Roth are joining the upcoming 11th season when it premieres on January 4th, 2021, the show announced. Who are the other... They'll join returning hosts Sharon Osbourne, Cheryl Underwood, and Carrie Ann Inaba. Yeah, I just found out that Carrie Ann Inaba was on... Is she on CBS? What channel is this? The Talk. Is that CBS? That's, yes, a CBS insider. Okay, I have to say something. You know, I, I find hosting news to be very interesting. Like, I, I think what goes on at The View to, is very interesting. I think the, the Real is actually an amazing show. Um, I'm always keeping up with hosting news. And I have literally never in my life seen one minute of The Talk. Mm-hmm. I literally did not even know this was a show. Um, they obviously have a problem with, like, brand imaging because I've never heard of it. And yeah, but I haven't, like, I, I couldn't tell you who was on it, but now, like, remembering that, like, Sharon Osbourne is on a talk show. It sounds familiar. It sounds familiar. And Marie Osmond, who just left. Okay, I, I hear that, but I'm like, The View, The Real, The Talk. It's just, like, I don't I don't know her. Do you know what I mean? No, I do know what you mean. It's definitely The View, The Real, The What? Right, yeah. <laughs> like, um, this is, and so I'm glad that they're making waves with their hosting announcement and, like, that people are talking about it. Maybe people will tune in. Like, I just... And by the way, we're not alone because sources recently told Page Six that the show's big big wigs were, quote, panicking after the talk's ratings dropped to 1.5 million, half of the View's audience. So, like, they are, you know, that that third what? Yeah, they're just And they like, know it. You know what they are? And the numbers show it. You know what they are? What? Morning Glory. Yes. What was that show called? Um... 
Daybreak. Daybreak, like that losery show with like no ratings. We're just like trying to do their best. But maybe but they on got a legit in, network. But maybe the, yeah, literally like CBS. It was called like IBM. IBS. Oh. IBS. Irritable Bowel Syndrome. Yeah. yeah. IBM is a tech if, company. If you haven't seen the movie The Morning 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 Glory, like you just have to. You just have to. But so maybe they got a new big wig in there in the form of Rachel McAdams. Well, they brought in Harrison Ford, and that's not what they're doing here. They're going like more new young, media, digital. which they should. And I actually think Amanda Klutz is a great um, choice for them. Like she's very digitally savvy. She's young. She's fresh. Um, who was the other one announced? Elaine Welchroth, who's a journalist. Oh, she's great too. She was on Project Runway. Uh, she used to be the editor in chief of Teen Vogue, I think. Or yeah, um, these are actually two really like whoever chose these, whatever new big wig was put in charge of this particular wig, um, it did a good job because these are two actually like very good choices that could that give this show a chance. Yeah, a, a chance, yeah. Yeah, like it's, it's not confirmed it's going to be a hit now. Yeah. I actually think what's so great about The View is like, obviously I think it's like one of the few places on TV that's like um, like open dialogue, like people from all walks of like the political spectrum. But it's also like young and old. Like Megan McCain, I think, is the youngest one on there. And like she lives and has totally different perspectives of like what's going on than like Joy Behar and Whoopi Goldberg. So I actually think it's cool and they're probably mimicking that to have like someone super young like Elaine Welteroff and then like Sharon Osbourne, like two yeah. totally different walks of life. Yes, but then it's like th- will they mix and well. will the convert like, you know, it- it's sort of that magic that you can't put your finger on. Do they have it or do they not? Right. And, that's and we'll why find out on January 4th on CBS. And that's why The View is so successful because it's like they fight like crazy. But I, like, I think they've all known each other like for so long, even before The View. So there's like that mutual love and respect that I don't think they actually like you can you watch and you're like, oh, my God, these people hate each other. But they don't. But I think that there have been instances where they truly do. And there's 100%. that book, Ladies Who Punch. You know, there, there was a I dark time. There was a dark time on The View. I think that you should read yeah, that. Yeah, I think I should. That was, was that the Elizabeth Hasselbeck era? It's like the whole era. Like, oh, and the Barbara like, Walters. It's like a history of The View. That actually sounds interesting. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'll read that next. That's a good... Um, After I finished The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, the new Redheads book, which is so good. It's like so well written and like it, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to your January selects. Yeah, they should be interesting. I don't know what we're going to pick yet. Oh, I think I know what you're going to pick. Girl with No Job, The Crazy Beautiful Life of an Instagram Thirst Monster. My book comes out January 26, 2021. You know, that really feels like it's so far, but it's not so far anymore. So No, it's not. Head over to girlwithnojob.com slash book or just head over to my Instagram, girlwithnojob. Tap the link in my bio. You could shop my book at tons of places, obviously Amazon, Barnes & Noble, the classic places. But you can also support local bookstores using bookshop.com or IndieBound and all the resources are on my Instagram and I would just really appreciate if you could pre-order it because that'll help me get into airports and I really want to be in airports because I just feel like famous people are in airports like if you're not in an airport go home yeah okay you ready for our next story always people oh wait no is it the next story that's brought to you by usual wines yes oh it is perfect pairing wow that's crazy perfect wine from usual wines I love my usual do it. Are we swapping yeah, yeah, today? Yeah. Okay. Usual Wines is a great one. It's easy. They're um, a fabulous I mean, they're, brand. They're like an amazing brand that's For like you a, to get geni- started. a genius concept that yeah. anyone could have th- thought of, but they did, and they're doing it better than anyone Brilliant else would way. have. Usual wines are wines for the modern drinker. That's us. Each bottle is 6.3 ounces, a heavy pour, or about a glass and a half of wine. I love a glass and a half. Uh, by the way, restaurants that do that are living in the year 3000. No, 100%. That's, us- that's always what I drink, a glass and a half. Mm-hmm. This, now I know, 6.3 ounces, or the size of a usual so wine. So you're going to walk into restaurants and be like, hi, man, have 6.3 ounces, please? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> no more pouring wine down the sink when you don't want to finish the bottle. Because of the single-serve format and bottle design, usual is always fresh. No more more flat, bubbly, or stale rosé. I can't deal with stale wine. I just can't. It's so sick. And like, you and know, you're desperate. It's, when, when it's absorbed all the smells of your fridge. No, you're literally drinking garlic wine. It's sick. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the wines are low carb and have zero grams of sugar. That's so important because as someone who's normally usually doing keto and wine is my drink of choice, it some wines do have a little bit of carbs, but now with Usual Wines, you don't have to make that hard choice. Mm. Usual has a red blend, a rosé, and a sparkling white wine called Brut. They also have a limited... I literally can't say the word Brut either without saying Brut. Ben's <laughs> deodorant is Brut brand. And I'm like, Ben, are you out of Brut? I'm going to the store. <laughs> they have a limited production Brut rosé just for the summer. Usual wines are made from world-class AVAs. That's the American Viticultural Area in California, like Napa, Sonoma, and Santa Barbara, and are made with minimal intervention, zero sugar, and zero additives. But 
Grapes don't. <laughs> I okay, like, give it back. No, 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 no. I feel like more of a rose. Yeah. If you love fruit wines as much as I do. Try usual wines. <laughs> 6.3 ounces per glass. Okay, but here's the tea. Okay. Here's the wine. Here's the grape. Mm. We have a special holiday product coming early November called the Usual Reserve. It's an ultra premium limited edition Mount Viter Cabernet Sauvignon. Introducing Usual Reserve. This is our most special wine yet, just in time for the holidays. Hailing from one of the most celebrated plots of land in all of Napa, the Cabernet Sauvignon is concentrated and rich with just enough grip. Mm. Give it to someone, gift it to someone special, or keep it all for yourself. This is a gift for Olivia, like 100%. 100%. The holidays as usual. Now, here is the actual meat and potatoes. Go check out their website at www.usualwines.com. Use our discount code TOAST for $8 off your first order and try your first glass on us. You're welcome. Happy holidays. Usualwines.com, code TOAST. Are you going to sneeze on that? On that truth bomb. Excuse me. Also, not. I know it's not a Fast Five story, but um, really quickly, I wanted to talk about, I don't know if you guys heard, but our niece, Michaela, tried solid food today for the first time, and it's just such a big deal. It's such a big deal. Like, she is just making leaps and bounds. No, she's a medical marvel, and she's literally going to be, like, the world's greatest scientist because she's a genius. No, totally. Like you she, she was just chomping on this, like, breast milk oat milk, oatmeal. So stunning. And it was stunning, and I just... It's big news, so I just wanted to share. Yeah, and everyone's talking about it, and we just always give you the news that you need to know, and that's definitely something you needed to know. We would be not doing our job if we didn't share that. Right. Okay, next up, People apparently has your People of the Year, and they're revealing who those people are. And of this the is year. different from like their most beautiful man. Most beautiful, most sexy. Yeah, yes, okay. This is different. These are just like people, good people. Okay. According to people. Okay. George. Oh, Co I see what they did there. No, no, I did that. Yeah, but I'm sure they did it too. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Like, what else would they do? You know? No, I know, but like, like person celeb of the year, person of the year, like, I'm sure they literally intentionally use the word people. Well, they introduced their 2020 people of the year. We have George Clooney, Regina King, Dr. Anthony Fauci, and Selena Gomez. Fauci-licious, definitious, make the boys go loco. No. Fauci-licious, definitious, makes the docs go loco. <laughs> Um, anyway, so it's uh, like a nice group of people. Yeah, Selena Gomez is on the cover. And I guess like it really was a good year for Selena Gomez. Because she launched her beauty line. Aside from the drama with Saved by the Bell, which I'm sure she literally doesn't even care about. Right. Um, yeah, she launched Rare Beauty, which I believe was like a smash success. I saw really positive reviews for like, and I went to, she did collabs with like certain YouTubers. So obviously they said like the products were like heavenly. But I also went to like people who would normally like rate makeup like completely honestly and apart from her her sponge which was pretty much regarded as like terrible everyone loved everything in the brand so I haven't tried anything but I've been meaning to try the eyeliner yeah no I think she had like a great launch I think the brand is well on its way she also put out a number one album oh I forgot yeah and became a successful cooking show host with her HBO Max series oh, Selena yeah. and Chef I feel like this is like the most she's done in a while. Yeah, no. So it was a big year for her. Yeah. There go. People of the year. Yeah. I don't know. Like if I was, you know, well, I guess I am a working person, but like would I want 2020 to be like the year that I did the most? I don't know. I think any year that's going to be a good year. Yeah, I think for sure. I guess, Why not? Yeah. I don't know. Who would be your people of the year? Like my person who I feel like accomplished the most in terms of business or like? Either. Because there's a, there's a bunch of people that run the gamut here, you know? I would say, like, any public figure who didn't find themselves, like, wrapped up in some sort of controversy this year um, is doing the most and, and is in the clear and is winning because it was really a terrible year to be a public figure or someone with, like, an Instagram following. Yeah. Okay. So no one specific. Like, I, I, like, I can't think of any. Honestly, Gigi Hadid had a great year. Like, she had a full-blown baby and, like is so famous like people are just like dying literally she posts a picture of her kids like hair they're like look at Gigi's daughter like people are obsessed so I think Gigi and Zane had a good year okay um do you have someone I think Dr. Theodore Fichemin had a good year yeah like, he just I mean it did get kind of competitive between him and Dr. Fauci mm -hmm. at certain points of the year because he it was, was Dr. Fauci and Dr. Fauci yeah which is you know it was it got heated it did get heated, but he always has a good year. You know? Always. He could, like, they could save him for next year. Do you ever, like, think about people whose lives you want to switch with? Uh, not in those exact terms, but lives of which I am green with envy. Rachel yeah. Parcell. Rachel Parcell. <laughs> and Rachel Parcell had a good year. Amazing. I, I just don't think Rachel Parcell has ever had a bad year. I, I know you don't know what goes on behind closed you doors, do but I know for sure she has never had a bad year. So I've been thinking, actually, um, recently, I always think, like, I wish I was Theo. Like, his life is just so stress-free. It must be frustrating not to be able to, like, communicate. But also, I don't think he has, like, the 
emotional intelligence to know like what communicating is you know what I mean mm-hmm. um but then I've also really been thinking about how like I'm green with envy over Olivia's life like she and her husband are just like so happy they never leave their house their baby's so fucking cute they like drink wine when the baby's asleep and they just like cook fabulous meals and I've been thinking like I want her life yeah I would also put up Miss Kaler for people of the year hundred percent actually I'm offended it's disgusting <laughs> that it took us this long no that they she didn't even oh. get an honorable mention from people yeah, magazine sick sick Kaler just was really like I realize that babies exist outside of Kaylor. I fully accept that. Um, And that what Kaylor does for us, other babies do for other people. But I just don't think anyone does it better. No, I I also I have a hard time believing. I believe that everyone believes that about their own kin. Yeah. And I think that's so wonderful. I'm so happy for everyone who feels that way that we feel towards Kaylor. You know, it's an amazing feeling. And I know I'm not unique in it, but I like to think that I am. Yeah, no, that's nice. Thanks. Um... Okay, ready for our next story? A little news sure. in like the streaming wars. Sure, sure, sure. Discovery is going to launch a streaming service in January at four ninety nine per month. Discovery and Ver- Verizon customers get a year free, and that is us. Discovery is HGTV, HGTV, Shark Week, Food Network. You know the fam. Magnolia. I think they bought Own, right? Perhaps. Oprah. Winfrey Network. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I don't know who needs this. And and, by way, and I'm a big HGTV fan. I feel like Discovery should have partnered with an existing streaming service. Like, this is just on another level. This is really niche. Yeah. But maybe this is the future. Instead of everyone having channels, right. every channel is a streaming service. And then you just go to the different apps in your in your Roku instead of different channels oh, you on know, your cable. That's a very interesting observation and something I could definitely see because I don't see a need for this. And I'm someone who really likes HG, HGTV, but like watching it on cable is like more than enough for me. Like, I, Or I have the HGTV app where they have like loads of content. Are they going to get rid of that? I'm sure they'll do some sort of merge. Yeah. You know, sort of how like HBO Go and HBO Max just became one. Yeah, that was confusing. But I have to say like I'm actually really liking HBO Max. It's one of my favorite. It's like a really a... Uh, a front runner in this streaming wars. So far, like the streaming wars, everyone's really stepped it up. Disney Plus Disney is Plus, everything of the sort. You know who has yet to really like fix their problems? Hulu. Hulu. Yeah. And their pause, and then the show starts over. It's and they so never not know user where friendly. You are. They don't know what how many episodes you've watched. You know how and it's great- a shame, by the way, because they actually have, I would say, maybe top two in all the streaming platforms, the best catalog of content. Like Desperate Housewives is on there. I'm watching Lost on there. Like, they have the most... Ra- Mad Men was on there. Like, they have the most random stuff. I Actually, guess. no, Mad Men was Prime. Sorry. Yeah, and I think I watched Mad Men on Netflix when it was on. Also, the thing about who... Oh, what I was going to say is a streaming service that had a really good, like, pause, play, remembrance memory was Acorn, where I watched A Place to Call Home, which oh, you was know, one of the highlights in my year. I need to keep that in the back of my mind for when we do, like, recaps. I need your help. So I started A Place to Call Home, and I just, like, never really got into it, but I had to pay seven ninety nine a month. I cannot figure out how to cancel it. Literally, I go to the website. They're like, oh, you, you signed up on your TV. You have to cancel on your TV. Go to my TV. They say, oh, you signed up on your computer. You have to Stop. cancel on your computer. They're swindling me. I'm about to just cancel my whole fucking credit card, like, just to get the seven ninety nine. It's killing me. Like, I did the week free trial, and I knew, I remembered to cancel it before the trial was up, but they are swindling me. Understood. Well, I think that it's just a sign that you should watch the show. No. My plate is maybe full, they, and I never really liked maybe it. Maybe they know that you haven't given it a fair shot yet. I feel like six episodes is a fair shot. Oh, you really didn't like it? I did not like it. It just didn't, like, I didn't wake up and be like, what's going on in... In Vaness. Vaness today. In Vaness. Oh, in in Vaness? In oh, Vaness. So, it's, it, what's going on in Vaness? Or no. in Inverness? In Inverness. Got it, okay. Yeah, no, I just, I didn't, I didn't connect with it. Okay. Fine, not for everyone. Fifth and final story, you ready for it? Always. A little data news from Spotify, amongst all the other data they're giving us. They're letting us know that the most streamed artist on Spotify for 2020 was... Let me guess. I don't know if you're going to guess. Billie Eilish? No. Maluma? No. Bad Bunny? Bad Bunny. Yeah. The Puerto Rican superstar is the music platform's most streamed artist of the year with 83 Billion streams globally. The Latin Grammy winner and hit maker who released a new album last week leads a top five list that also includes Drake, J Balvin, Juice World, and The Weeknd. That's crazy. That's yeah. not who I would expect. No, that's not who I would expect either. But that's that's an interesting top five. Yeah. Um, I also watched the Billie Eilish totally random. I watched her Vanity Fair thing last night. The same interview every yeah. year. It was kind of confu- like a kind of long and annoying to watch. I just wanted to see her 2021. Like, I've seen the other ones. I don't need to, like, keep rewatching them. It was kind of frustratingly edited. 
Oh. You know? I've never watched one of them, but um, I like the concept. I like seeing her hair change um, each year. Like, so that's this cool. 2019 to 2020 did not change. change. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Anyway, so that's just an interesting piece of information. Um, congratulations to Bad Bunny on the amazing year. Now I want to hear what's in your Spotify wrapped. Well, uh, mine was actually really shocking because, um, like, I always knew I was, like, a big Lauren Elena fan, but I guess I didn't realize, like, how big of a fan I was because my number one song was getting good. Like, that's the song I listened to the most times this year. Wow. By such Lauren a good Lane. song. Such a good song. Okay. What was yours? My number one song was Stupid Love by Lady Gaga. Okay. Number two song. Even Though I'm Leaving by Luke Combs. This Bar by Morgan Wallen. Wow. I found myself in this bar. Mm, mm, mm. Making mistakes and making new, new friends. friends. <laughs> number three. I was growing up when nothing made sense. Mm, mm, mm. Putting on that like neon in the dark. Like I listened to it, what, a hundred times? I still don't know, still don't know the words. I found myself in this box. Number three. Physical, Dua Lipa. Stunning song. Before You Go, Louis Capaldi. Interesting. Number, Number four. Hollywood, Louis Capaldi. Mine is Invisible String by Taylor Swift, which I find really interesting because That's it's definitely number one song from folklore for you then. But it's not. But like, it is more than peace, apparently. But I feel like it m might just be like when I, pr but the thing is with folklore and mostly Taylor Swift, I always buy her albums because I know like she's a big purveyor of like artists owning their own work or whatever. So I actually listen to most of my Taylor on Apple Music because I own Reputation, I own Folklore, I own Lover. So I feel like my Taylor Swift data is actually not accurate on Spotify, even though she was my number one artist and they said I was within like 1% of, you know, her top listenership. I feel like I was actually more because I listened to more of it on You know, record. I was in her top 2% of listenership. That's crazy. And you know, Olivia, who's like always like hating on Taylor Swift just because Olivia's like, you know, she's like they're off just, the beaten path. Like they're she, just like, they're not. Who was Olivia's number one artist? Taylor motherfucking Swift. Well, it was the year of Taylor Swift. Yeah. What was your number five song? August by Taylor Swift, which I which tracks. But I just think like Folklore was probably my number four and five songs for sure. But I don't know if it, it was definitely August, but I feel like it also would have been better your piece. Got it. My number five was Before You Go by Louis Capaldi. So I have two Louis. Wow. I've been telling I've been trying to tell you guys that I'm really into Louis Capaldi and now Spotify just showed you two Louis Capaldi songs in my top five. What song did you like discover before it hit 50,000 streams? Oh, um, I didn't take a screenshot of that. Mine is Country and Me by Lauren Elena. Like, I'm literally Lauren Elena's number one fan. Oh, that's so funny. And then, who are your top artists? Taylor Swift, number one. Same. Wow. Number two? Lady A. Wow, Luke Combs for me. Because I made a playlist called um, Lady A of all of my favorite songs, pretty much all of their songs, right. and mine is like five or six that I can't stand, where I would just listen to it on shuffle, and I did the same thing for my number three artist, Rascal Flatts. And that's also because I thought they were retiring and that we were going to go on tour and right. follow them and like do Molly every night, and then that didn't happen. <laughs> my number three was Five Seconds of Summer, um, which I really loved. Like I, I know like the data is um, like statistical so it's like so me but it really <laughs> is like so me you know that's funny yeah my number four was also rascal flats my Yours. number four was lady gaga and then my number five was queen lauren elena my number five was luke combs i just really i love just feel like really represented by like these top artists like i i do feel obviously like i wish like morgan Wall were in there and like, me too you know some other artists that i loved um but i do feel like this is an accurate representation of me but that's because it is yeah i also thought really interesting was my top genres and i feel like they were definitely skewed because of folklore because my number one pop genre was pop. And I definitely do not listen to pop the most. I listen to contemporary country, which was my number two, which is right behind. Like, a, But it must have been because folklore pushed it over the edge and just probably my general love for Taylor Swift pushed it over the edge. And then also my number three was Christian music. Oh, that's so interesting. My number three was Christian music also. My number two was contemporary country. And my number one was pop. Obviously. I don't know if like people find other people's I feel like talking about your stats is like talking about your dreams like nobody cares I know okay <laughs> and I feel that way too I'm just like so interested in it that I can't help but share it and also like we do talk a lot about the show like uh -huh. about pop culture and so it's interesting to hear what we actually listen to like I feel like we talked about like so many albums like Ari has an album coming out apparently I didn't listen to it yeah you know so no I definitely agree with that I these feel are like the things that track our data is you know further proof of our standhood to literally everything we talk about here right it's I not feel like that. I go home and like listen to Bach and then come here well, and I actually pretend do to be, dabble in Beethoven. And but, I come here and pretend to be like a pop queen. You yeah, know? no, I agree with you. Like this is just proof that we, we do our homework. <laughs> no, that like we're, yeah, we do we're our homework. here for a reason. Yeah. Um, okay, well, those were the fast five stories. You needed to know them. And speaking of things you didn't need to know, let's talk about last night's Bachelorette. Let's talk about it. Um, it was really like a, uh, an episode for me where I feel like up until now I've really been feeling like all these guys, like, I love them. And now they're, like, all individually starting to annoy me. 
Oh, interesting. I, there's like two or three people who I came into the season like feeling really strong towards and now I'm like out on them. Well, Margot the Snatchler posted probably the most um, profound tweet about Bennett that I couldn't agree more with. And it's, it's that quote. And every time I hear this quote, it shakes me to my core. You told me about it and you said Ariana on Vanderpump Rules said it. Tashina. Tashina. Um, but it's actually a direct quote. When Ben made me watch Batman over quarantine, it's from Batman. And it's obviously uh, you either die the hero or live long enough to become the villain. And that is Bennett to a T. Literally, I thought he was so funny. Even like even up until like last week, the week before, like when he was being like mean, I thought I still thought it was funny. Now he's gotten to a place that is so fucking annoying. Like, I cannot wait for him so to go annoying. home. So stupid. And the first person to use the word emotional intelligence on The Bachelor is out. Like, Agreed. And I'm out on them. And that, that whole emotional intelligence thing is like, it's so played out. I mean, when he was describing the four tenets of emotional intelligence, I was kind of interested. I agree. But I was listening like, to a seminar on, on emotional intelligence because I didn't know that. Right. But like separate <clears throat> from the episode of The Bachelor. And I don't even want to decide whose side I'm on or like who I think is wrong or right. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Because if you have somehow found yourself in this room with Tasha, like fighting about drama like you're not the man for Tasha, and yeah. that's at the end of the day like that's all that matters that is all that matters so let's start from the beginning because she had a one-on-one -on -one with Zach C and whom I love whom I love the date itself was like wedding pictures that like the footage was better than the photos that were blurry why and, did like, they do that it was so strange and that I was like it was a, a terrible promo for the photographer like, I know I thought the same thing. every time they snapped the picture and showed what it turned out like they literally looked like somebody put Vaseline on the lens <laughs> no, exactly <laughs> like, like iPhone portrait mode would have been better no I, I was so confused so confusing and why and do they do dates like that like such a terrible concept for a date they did like make it fun and cute sort of but like when they were when he was like this is how it actually feels on your wedding day it's like no, it's no, it not. You're just wearing a suit. No, but I did. Um, I was actually really shocked when he also said he was married briefly at one yes. point. And anytime one of the contestants says that they're married, I'm like, fuck yes. Like, this is the man for you. Because now there's two. Brendan, who yeah. I still really like, and I think Tasha still really likes. Mm -hmm. And now Zach C. And obviously him talking about his wedding, like, opened up this huge floodgate to, like, what he went through in the past 10 years in the past 10 years which I thought was very inspiring and very honest like every time he revealed something new about himself I'm like oh wow that's it and then he's like literally he just didn't stop it was like honesty truth honesty truth like he just opened up so much and I, honestly I don't think I've ever seen anyone on the show like be that honest a hundred percent and like he could have been more vague vague about it but he he just went there and he really opened up and shared he didn't hold back, and I thought I was very impressed by his honesty as well. I think Tasha was. He got the rose, and I think she re already really liked him before. Mm -hmm. And I think they're like, you know, they have that bond now. I agree. I was just really shook um, at the sheer honesty of it. Yeah, there's he's one to watch. A hundred percent. He's definitely up there. Like maybe makes it to hometowns. Then we go on the group date, yeah, which was the whole art thing, and. I, I like I, I really don't want to be mean, so I'm really just not going to say anything. Okay, I don't want to be mean, but I'm going to say something. Sure. First, I just want to say like I think when anybody opens up about like their struggles and their past, especially on TV, but even not on TV in real life, like I think that it is so brave. I couldn't agree and more. And it's become this like trope on The Bachelor. You get your one on one, and then you share like the thing that you went through. Mm -hmm. And I think we've all become really accustomed to that. And that is really important in getting to know someone. In a relationship, 100%. You, like, I feel like I have such a better sense of who Zach C is now, knowing so much about him of course. than I did before his one-on-one. -on -one. And having dinner with Tasha in a romantic setting is the perfect place to open up. I just the way felt... it went down on the group date where it's like they're all going around. It's almost like a competition of like who's been through like the worst thing. And like it was so, it almost like, it, 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 does, it, doesn't, it doesn't do justice like these things that these men have actually been through. And I feel like for Tasha, I don't know who made it this way, but I feel like for Tasha, like that is so much for one woman to have on her shoulders, all of these men who are vying for her. And now they've all completely opened themselves up in front of each other. It's that's just why like, she was crying. That's why she was crying. It's too heavy. No, I couldn't agree more. I thought the setting was like just wholly inappropriate. Right. Like, like, let's just talk about like the actual, like, um, physical, like everyone's standing in a square holding frames like it was just not ideal physical setting then I don't know you want to open up about your trauma like in front of 20 relative strangers like yeah you, and and then also think about the cameramen the producers like there's just so many people and the whole thing gave me a weird vibe and and I thought what everyone opened up about was like really lovely and I don't want to really personal and it's I'm not saying anything bad about that because I think like any person let alone like a man who opens up like it's it's hard and I just, like, it just didn't make me feel the way I think it was intended to make me feel. Yeah, and I think it's a lot of pressure for Tasha to, like, have 
to this have information. to process all of that information to all of these guys, like in front of each one of them. It's just a lot. Like it for was a, like date a firing that started squad. as like a nude, uh, uh, like a jokey Joke. nude painting thing. Yeah, I agree. But like, I think there were some people who did like a really cute, and I think it started out light and then it just got super heavy. Yeah, Brandon with his frame where he put himself in the portrait and then like turned it to the side. Like that was perfect. Ivan with the puzzle piece, like King Ivan, he's definitely top four material. Um, and, not, and, and I can't stress this enough because I don't want people to like give me shit. I'm not saying anything, and you know who I think handled it well? Ben. Naked. Because Naked Ben. Because when he got naked, I'm like, this is bizarre and kind of weird. But Oh, but then he told her privately. And it followed up and it made sense. Like, oh, him showing off his body is like a really big deal. And he told her privately. Like, I don't know. To me, like, that made more sense. Right. And I'm not necessarily judging the men for, for sharing. No. I just don't know what, like, circumstances led to, okay, we're all going to, like, you know, open up today. I just feel, I just thought it was, like, it was it was it reminded me of the, this episode of friends where it's thanksgiving and everyone is like it's just like all these like lies are coming to truth <laughs> and and ross kept, ross says this thing and that's reminding me of, he's like it's thanksgiving not truth day and like that's what it felt like everyone was just like telling their truth it's naked art not truth day. when it felt so random because it, they were just doing an art class and obviously like production told them to do this and like that's just what i didn't agree with like production like I don't know. It felt like exploiting people's trauma. trauma. I, I totally agree. And and I can't stress this enough. I'm not saying what any of the guys did was wrong. I just felt like the whole setting was very strange. I totally agree. That's how I feel also. Um, and then we spent like the last 20 minutes of the episode like, oh, there was one more one-on-one. -on -one Easy. With, oh. And he got sent home. Yeah, that was. And that was so strange. That was very, very strange. But I did think it was kind of weird of him to say that he was falling in love with her when Completely he's literally agree. never spent no, a minute with her. that is like, you either think it's going to be the thing that keeps you here till the end or it gets you sent home if you stay one minute too, too early yeah and yeah by the way like I don't even think I've ever seen Tasha and easy talk so like he's obviously not in love with her like I just think he's seen one too many episodes of The Bachelor and like knows that that's a step you have to take and wanted to be like but, ahead of the curve but not on your first one-on-one -on -one. no but I was having so much fun on the one-on-one -on -one until that moment because it was so funny like um the haunted house like I just thought it was hilarious like Tasha's so funny easy so funny I actually think they might have been like really compatible but I just don't think easy was being and I liked easy a lot I just don't think he was coming off like at all like authentic do you know what I mean yeah I mean, and I think she has like a good radar for that yeah and I do think like if she, if he hadn't said I'm falling in love with you like he probably would have gotten the rose mm -hmm. but like you're not even if you really really like her like you're not falling in love with her yet your date was like a fun silly thing that's not like falling in love yet you guys have yet to even like open yourselves up to each other yeah 100 percent. so I, I i saw why she sent him home i thought it was just like surprising and i actually really like when bachelorettes send guys home like in the middle of dates not to embarrass them or anything but just to not waste their time and so while i appreciated that like i was just surprised because i think Easy's such a catch yeah and he's been like probably one of my favorites like since the beginning yeah even with claire no and they, they literally flashed to the guys in the house being like they probably have the strongest connection like there's no way he's going home yeah and so i thought they were setting us up when they were showing to the guys all saying that i thought they were setting us up for like easy going really far because i hadn't thought that they had like an immediate obvious connection but the guys obviously in the house see something that we don't see yeah but it, they're obviously just setting us up to trick us like right, like no that's i you should have known when that happened but there's no way home. he's going home yeah going yeah, yeah. Home. home um and then i don't even like the noah and bennett stuff is so dumb but Tasha looked fire as fuck when she walked stunning. into that room stunning that dress she's real. i know they have the same stylist for every bachelorette and for every season but he like just I think he's just really connecting with Tasha and her body because he's dressing her like just so well. So well, I was actually thinking like if if the turnaround was so quick for her to become the Bachelorette, like how did they get all of these like sickening styles for her? I'm sure they like mass ordered from Revolve and and by the way, I'm sure Tasha and Claire are similar sizes. Oh yeah, like yeah. they could wear the same. Yeah, no, but the and style. They I'm sure they have a seamstress. The green dress she wore to dinner with Easy, I was like with the chain sleeves was so sick. Unwell. She just looks amazing like at every turn. I. She, not to obviously like pit anyone against each other, but like she's like so fucking stunningly beautiful. Like I just I can't. She's a pleasure to watch on television. I completely agree. Like just a true and joy. And the looks are completely on point. And she looks great, even though those wedding dresses were absolutely heinous. Like each one she came out in was more <laughs> ugly than the next. She carried them all with grace and elegance. She really did. Also, JoJo showed up. Oh, that's the other thing I want to talk about. Like how weird this season is. Like. So rare we have two bachelorettes in one season. And it just feels like everything about the season is so flaky. Like, they're not traveling. There's not even a full bachelorette. Chris Harrison just ups and leaves for the first time in 15 years. Like, the whole season just feels so, like, stitched together, like, with a Band-Aid, you know? And also, what's, like, really... 
I can't help but think about it every single time a new person shows up. Even the photographer for the wedding, which was like so unnecessary. They had to quarantine. It, no, but it's like, did they quarantine? Did Jojo, like Jojo. Yes. Um, like Ashley, I, Jared, like everyone who came through, they quarantined. Like the way that they showed the men going through it, like every single person who's hopping on did the same thing. And it's fine if they didn't, but they like were able to confirm that they were I think they definitely film. did. I don't think they did like two weeks test to two weeks test. Like I do. I don't. I really do. Because think about when this was filmed. Now I feel like things are a little bit more relaxed. Um, but this was filmed like four months ago, like when things were worse. Right. But I just think like they had these people who were coming like get tested and then they were able to come. Or maybe like Ashley and Jared like live in L.A. and like they just had to stay in their apartment for two weeks. Maybe. I don't know. No, it's but, like, interesting Jojo to lives think about. in Dallas. Yeah, no. Jojo's a big question mark. Like I just, it just makes me like annoyed that we had to watch all that stuff in the beginning when it's like you guys have clearly figured out a way to get like a photographer in for the afternoon. Yeah, the photographer, um, I just feel like they really did him dirty. Like <laughs> I'm sure the pictures came out much better and they just like, they kept freeze framing on like, the, they weren't even smiling. Like it was no, just no. like that whole scene was edited very strangely. It was so, so bad. Like it would have been nice to see some of the cute photos, but like we couldn't yeah. see them. No, I thought it was really cute, like the whole thing. And I just couldn't believe he was married again. Like, And I did like all the different styles of wedding. They had like princess wedding wedding Vegas rock star wedding oh by the way do you think that it's at all a coincidence that there are now two guys who have been married um who were on Claire's season what do you mean like they knew Tasha was coming and they no. loaded up with guys who have been married previously no I don't I just think some of them happen to be older because Claire was oh older. that's true and so if you're 35 like the you're more likely you've been married before are stronger. That's such a brilliant point. You're a genius. Um, so that's our bachelorette recap. Anything else we missed from the episode? It was just, it wasn't, it wasn't anything to write home about. No, but like, I do feel like there have been a few moments this season where I'm like actually shocked, which rarely yeah. happens. Or I'm like hysterically laughing. Yes. Which rarely happens. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, all right, so that's our Bachelorette recap, and now we're going to dive into Dear Toasters, our and advice the segment. And they were quiet today. Yeah. But they, don't forget about them. Like, they're here, and they're proud yeah um but thanks for being quiet it's so annoying <laughs> um our advice segment is brought to you by athletic greens with so many stressors in life it's difficult to maintain effective nutritional habits and give our bodies the nutrients it needs to thrive busy schedules poor sleep exercise stress or simply not eating enough of the right foods this is where athletic greens can help their daily all-in-one superfood powder is by far the easiest and most delicious nutritional habit that you can add to your health routine today and empower you to take ownership of your health one tasty scoop of Athletic Greens contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole foods, sor whole food sourced ingredients, including multivitamin, multimineral, probiotic, green superfood blend, and more. They all work together to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet, increase energy, and focus aid with digestion and support a healthy immune system, all without the need to take multiple products. They continue to obsessively improve their formula based on the latest research in producing 53 iterations over the last decade and counting. And Athletic Greens is doubling down on supporting your immune system during the winter months. They are offering our audience a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase if you visit our link today. You'll basically never have to buy vitamins again. And by the way, I've been taking vitamin D now um, from Athletic Greens for like the last month I would say because um they say like with COVID like you should be taking it for your immunity so to get a free year supply in this day and age is just a bargain that you really can't put a price on um visit athleticgreens.com slash toast that's athleticgreens.com slash toast um to get your free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs today. Again, that link is athleticgreens.com slash toast. And you can only get the free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs if you use that link, athleticgreens.com slash toast. Love it. All right, Dear Toasters, our advice segment. If you ever want to write in, the email is deartoasters at gmail.com. We'll always keep it anonymous and you can write in about anything. Okay, let's go. Dear Jackie and Claudia, my boyfriend and I have been living together for about eight months now. I've been supporting us financially as I have been back at work since May and he just returned a few weeks ago. One girl I work with told me she has an OnlyFans account and made about $40,000 in the last month. I've been super stressed about money and thought, I have a nice ass, why not make a few extra dollars? I created an OnlyFans account behind his back because even talking about money stresses him out. I only had the account active for four days and felt so guilty, so I deleted it. A few days later, my boyfriend confronted me about my about the situation and we talked about why I started one. He had a few questions but understood why I did it. Since our conversation about the account, I have not stopped wondering about how he found out about the account. It was only active for four days and I only had one fan. 
only fan lol she said <laughs> i always used to i always used a private browser when accessing the account and would delete the window after sketchy i know i've talked about it with a few friends and they think he either went through my phone or has some sort oh some sort of spyware on my phone should i bring it up to my boyfriend i feel guilty because i know i'm in the wrong for creating the account but really want to know how he found out also what should i do if he did go through my phone or has spyware sincerely a toaster who only posted a few butt pics for a buck um that's a good question like i guess I would be fixated too on how we found out and you 100% have to ask. I don't know because if he has spyware and like I feel like we always see this in movies like when you're suspicious of something so you go to the person and like let them know of your suspicions and then you bear, like you lose your advantage yeah. of being suspicious. So I would try like maybe like now that we're like there's spyware involved like we have to be spies about it. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's not like your average like just ask your boyfriend if he went through your phone because if he went through your phone that's one thing but if you're suspicious of spyware then we've got to be spies no no honestly so we have I to think, level up we have to call in the big guns no, Junie cortez you need to like do something on your phone that would make him ask you a question do you know what i mean huh like just like you were on only fans which made him oh. ask why are you on only fans yeah like start looking at like bbw <laughs> like something you know yeah like something, <laughs> something that that'll would, alert him that would alert him that would make him ask you a question that's a very good plan do you know what i mean so i don't know what it is for him, like if I selling thought, feet pics or something. Yes, yes, exactly. Because that'll because that's in line with OnlyFans. Like, oh, but she's like, just trying to make my extra money. Is having spyware on someone's phone like in a casual way a illegal? Thing? No, is it a thing? Yeah, I don't know. You guys, your friends sound like they're gaslighting you and like making you really paranoid. But I, I, I think your initial curiosity about how he found out is very valid. Yeah, I would. Try I don't know if it's as far as like a full blown, you know, mole in your phone, <laughs> but I do. If he's going through your stuff, you gotta know. Yeah, I've never heard of like casual spyware. That's like if you're not in the CIA, like you have like spies in your phone. No, like I think, but I also am like not, you know, up on yeah. up on some stuff. I got. I haven't read my Spy Monthly, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not entirely sure. But um, I I agree. Like I think you might be like overthinking like he might just be like look looking through your phone when you're in the shower you know like there's no sophisticated technology does he have your password like he's had possibility yeah i would love a follow-up here to be honest um but i think that you should definitely do some digging on how he found out and set and lay some traps like just like casual traps yeah like pretend you're having an affair like with this random number you know yeah like get some texts going like make it one of your friends like change the Remo number no delete her um Delete her contact. So people who are shady don't save cell phone numbers. That's always how you know they're being shady. Oh, interesting. So yeah, do something like that and like have a fake affair. And, Lay a trap. And destroy your relationship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's our advice. Next no, up. But, like, but just do a little spy work if you think there's spies involved. You know. You don't to, go to him with your suspicions. Like it's, it's, if you, you have to one-up the spy. Yeah, because if there's spyware going on, like, this is nefarious. You don't go to, like, the person who's being nefarious and yeah. say, are you a nefarious person? Yeah, but I guess in, like, the name of honesty, like, in a relationship, like, that's actually what you should do. Right, but he broke the honor code first if he is a spy. Yeah, but do you think there's any way that, like, one of your friends, like, was a snitch? Yeah, look into Because you didn't say that and you didn't you tell by anyone. By the way, you could lay traps there too. Say you're tell each fan a different secret. Tell one you're going back on OnlyFans. Tell another you were Selling weird about feed the picks. but but you're going to sell feed pics. Like Tyrion Lannister in Game of Thrones. Tell everyone something different, and whichever one gets back to him, snitch alert. Yeah, like Tyrion Lannister or like Kardashians when they thought Jonathan Chabon was selling stories, so they like made up fake stories to Jonathan. Yeah. Um, we hope that was helpful. I think that was. Next up, hey Claude and Jax, thanks for being my source of news and entertainment over the year 2020. Now let's get to the not so good stuff. I've been dating slash engaged to an actual pjom. Literally puts up with my sassy ass and I don't know why sometimes. We've been together for over a year and have plans to get married next spring. The past summer, my high school ex added me on Snapchat. He would randomly message me and I would sometimes respond. The past couple weeks, we have snapped each other every day, all day, and even late at night. At one point, we had what the kids called a streak going. I know, I know, stupid. A we are streak. We are 30 and too old to care. He is married with one child and another one on the way. Our convos are, convos are mostly light, but sometimes get flirty and sexual, but never in a sexting way or towards each other. That It's more like that's what she said stuff, you know, like silly jokes. I know I shouldn't be talking to him, but I'm so stressed with working full time outside of the home in this COVID climate, wedding planning, house buying, throwing money out left and right. So having this fun outside distraction has been nice. Am I a horrible person? How and when should I end this little affair? Thanks for your solicited advice. Okay, I'm going to do my absolute best, like not to be judgy, but like you have to stop. Like, I hate when people do this, like ruin perfectly good things. Like 
not only do you have something really good going on, he has something really good going on. Like, what are you guys doing? Like, I, I realize that you're stressed. Play tennis. Like, don't go making, like, Snapchat affairs. Like, I am so not here for this. You are making a mistake, and your man is a pee-jom, and you have to fix it, and you have to stop, and so does he. You're making a mistake, and you should stop right now, delete the Snapchat app before you make a real mistake. Like, this is just... I understand that right now, like, you can make the argument that, like, you guys are just technically friends. Can boys and can exes be friends and snap? Like, sure, sure. But what's the point, really? And then, so you're saying it's, like, a fun little distraction. Find a different distraction. No, there's just so many things. Like, I've taken up knitting. I watch a lot of TV. Become a redhead. There's so many. Yeah, there's so many. Become a Patreon member. Like, there's so many things that you could do to distract (laughs) yourself. Um, I just, this is, like, I feel like this is, like, a plot of a movie, you know, like, there's nothing like I just I've seen this before somewhere and I just know it doesn't end well. And like yeah. I really encourage you just to like stop. And you are saying that your man is a pijam. Like we have to protect pijams at all costs. That's all. When she said that, like that was a nail in the coffin for me where I was like. And then he also has a baby. Like there's no there's no you know, it's not like a, a love affair that it's like we're going to be together. You guys aren't OTP. No, not at all. Oh, my God. Your OTP is waiting at home for you. Go back in bed. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm sorry to ruin the fun. I like, know. To be a fun ruiner. But you wrote into us knowing that the fun needed to be ruined. And Sometimes I'm, you know where you need to hear the hard truth. And that's what we're giving you today. Sorry. I'm so sorry. It's going to be like, focus on the P-Jom. Focus on the P-Jom. Next up. Hi, Claudia and Jackie. And of course, Dr. Fachemin. Hi, Dr. Fachemin. She spelled Fachemin wrong, but she said, I'm sorry, I'm a horrible speller. I am writing in desperate need of help in regards to my brother's horrible girlfriend. She's an absolute terror. I'm talking rude to my family, rude to my parents, friends, and doesn't try to be kind to my mom and me. Anyways, they've been dating for about eight months now, and my brother knows we hate her and is going to date her in spite of us. I really thought she was going to be gone by now, but the holidays are approaching, and she is planning on spending all the holidays with my family. Thanksgiving is fine because of COVID. We're not supposed to travel, but she doesn't plan on going home for Christmas. My family is extremely close and my mom and I are not comfortable with this. We feel like we are walking on eggshells around him and her and we can't even tell him it's weird. She doesn't want to see go, go see her own family. It's not hard for her, her to go home. It's only a couple hours drive. So they think it's weird that like she won't go home and see her own family. Anyways, what do I do? I do not want my Christmas to be spent with her and it truly gives me anxiety thinking I might have to deal with her forever. P.S. My brother once sent a nude of her in our family group chat and never told her. Seems like the smoking gun, but I'm not going to be the sister. But how fucking hilarious and disturbing is that? My mom said it's the last thing I ever wanted to see, but I now get why he likes her. <laughs> That's really funny. That's funny. Oh my, this is a horrible situation because I feel like one of two ways. Like, Part of me is like, if your brother is really like a spite dater, the fact that you guys are also up in arms about it, like you're giving him more energy to like keep going and like making you angry. So part of me wants to be like, just pretend like you don't care. And like maybe he'll get realize he doesn't even like her. and There's nothing there. But then you run the risk of like him thinking that all is good and like marrying her, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. I'm going to play devil's advocate here. I think rude is a subjective term. And you haven't given us really like real concrete reasons as to why you don't like her now you say eight months why should come in a family christmas you know they're not like at that level yet you complain that she's rude to your parents friends why and how is she around your parents friends in the last eight months if like they're not that serious and also it's a pandemic wow nancy drew over here maybe like they are more serious than you think and again i would like to understand like what she has done that is rude you know because maybe she's a bitch and like I'm totally off base and you know you could right we're just taking you because this girl wrote us in we're just taking you could give me a laundry list of things that she's done but maybe we come at it from her side he has this family of strong-willed women and maybe she's a little shy and the shyness comes off as rudeness I know for me sometimes that has happened my shyness does come off as rudeness because people expect me to be like big and bubbly and then when I'm kind of quiet they're like oh she's just not talking to us yes by the way a lot of people think that you're rude when you meet them yeah because I'm just like kind of quiet and reserved and they think I'm just like being judgmental but I'm just like being I'm I'm, I'm shy like I'm feeling uncomfortable and I think people think like just because your hair is red like that you would be like loud in the center of attention when it's you're actually the opposite no a hundred percent so my advice too is going to be a little different okay let's take Christmas out of the equation sounds like she's coming I think you and her should have a night together. Maybe get a little drunk. Maybe get to know her a little bit and try and understand like why she is the way she is. Maybe at the end of it, she's she's the bitch you thought she was. But you you at least tried. Yeah, I just think, especially if you know they're and also if your brother is really a spite dater and he sees you're you're like trying to get to know her, he might rethink his strategy. But also sometimes at the end of the day, I think. Some of the, like, the best friendships always start with two girls who hated each other. 
A hundred percent. Olivia and Danny. Yeah. Like lifelong friends for life and hated each other so much. Yeah. I think you guys like when she's at the, I don't know what your plans are, but when she's at, you guys are together for the holidays, you guys like have a girl's night, get a little drunk, share your secrets. Well, don't give her too much because if she's really mean, she'll yeah. use it against you. But you know, just like kick back. No, like you could hate someone so much, but like you have a couple drinks and like you are their best friend. It's actually crazy. Like, and like you guys might bond in a way that like you might understand her better. You might not be best friends, but like you might have a different opinion of her. You know what? You really opened my eyes, Jackie. I agree with you. I'm just, it tis the season, you know, spread love and joy. Deck the halls with boughs of Theo. Ba la 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 la. That was Dear Toaster's Our Advice segment again. If you ever want to write in or if you have written in in the last few months and we read your advice on air and you have an update for us, please send an update to deartoasters at gmail.com. Just put update in the subject line. We really want to hear from you guys. Um, but thank you to everyone who wrote in today and we hope that was helpful. I actually think that might have been some of our best advice yet. I totally agree, except for the spy stuff. If only we were spy kids. Don't forget to pre-order my book, girlwithnojob.com slash book. It is book. my autobiographical memoir, co- comedy. It's honestly comedy at its finest. Jackie's read it, and she's a really harsh critic. And even if she hated it, I think she would tell me, so. If I would have hated it, I would have, like, given you, like, it was still in the writing phase. I would have given you, like, right. no. you know, some more criticism. So check it out. Girlwithnojob.com slash book. Anything you want to promote before we go? New episode of the Redhead Shops next week. Follow me on Instagram at Jackie O Problems. Follow the pups with no job on Instagram if you're looking for some content uppers. I posted a photo yesterday that is my new go-to content upper where it just like will always bring a smile to my face. It's of Theo and Magnolia being the cutest cousins. I'm working on a version where Theo is photoshopped in because they are just the cutest cousins that anyone has ever seen. Pups with no job, premium content. Between the three of them, like the premium content, it's, it's on a daily basis now and, and I don't think you'll regret it. Thank you guys so much for listening to The Morning Toast, the Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give us a video a thumbs up. We hit 70,000 subscribers. That was very exciting. Oh my God, hey subscribers. Um, we're also available as a podcast and where podcasts can be found. So that's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeart, Radio, CastBox, all the places wherever you listen to podcasts. Find us. The Morning Toast, leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. We hope you have an amazing day. You will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye.